And we got a bunch of creative brushes coming up that I can't wait to see what you guys do uh, with these because I think there's a lot of possibilities here. So these are the snake curve brushes. And in order to talk about them, let's talk a little bit about the snake hook first. Uh, so I'm gonna grab a Z-sphere, pull that on our canvas, go into edit mode. And by default, if I go into BSH, that'll give us our snake hook. And in fact, you know, we have a couple different varieties of that. So we go BS. And you can see we have snake hook, snake hook two, and snake sphere. Uh, and uh, there used to be a snake cactus in here, I think. Oh, there it is, snake cactus way over here. And if you want to know more about these in depth, you can go to ZBrush 2018, what's new. It's all when Sculptures Pro came out and then all those new snake hook brushes came out that use that functionality. Uh, it's all in that 2018 uh, playlist here. The long story short, here's the snake hook brush. You can pull out on a mesh. Let's go ahead and say make poly mesh 3D first. So now we can pull out on our mesh. And if we don't have Sculptures Pro turned on, it's just gonna kind of, you know, distort our polygons quite a bit. However, you're gonna see if we turn on Sculptures Pro, we can activate that. And then now when we pull, we're gonna get that automatic tessellation as we pull out. Now there's one thing I wanna mention here, and that is under the brush modifiers for Sculptures Pro, we have a brush, well, under brush, the brush, menu there's a modifier submenu and then there's a brush modifier in that brush modifier submenu uh, and it's at zero right now so that means if i'm looking right at the object and i just pull downwards you're going to see it's just going to follow my downward stroke which is expected behavior however with the brush modifier set at one and i push and pull downwards you're going to see it's going to come straight at me i'll do it a little bit slower so i'm going to pull straight out and then i look it's coming right at me so instead of going down it's following the surface normal of the object so here is the camera position i'm going to pull downwards make my brush size a little bit bigger so here i'm going to keep pulling downwards and i go to the side it's coming right at the camera however brush modifier of zero pull downwards and it follows my brush so one follows the surface normal a lot and then zero follows whatever the hell my brush is doing and the direction I'm telling it to go in. So now, like many brushes, or, or actually any brush, for example, you can switch over here to the standard brush, that's BSI, sorry, BSJ. Um, you can go in here, you can go into the stroke palette here and drag it over to the left. You can go down here to curve, turn on curve mode, drag it out on your mesh here, and then you can just start pulling and it'll start standard brush pulling uh, with Sculptures Pro mode turned on, it'll start pulling that standard brush through my mesh and creating deformations. In fact, you can even add an alpha to this. Let's go ahead and add alpha 33. And under the stroke settings, let's open up modifiers here. And if I turn on this roll button, that's going to spread that entire alpha along the entire curve here. So you can see this arrow is going all the way down the curve and now I'm able to pull my standard brush through it using that arrow alpha. So back to our snake hook, BSH, we can turn curve mode on for that and now we're using a snake hook to manipulate this mesh. So that's a little background of snake hook and curves. So let's look at these new brushes. So I'm going to go into B to bring up my brush menu, S to narrow it down to all the brushes that start with S, and you're going to see we have a new one, two, three, or one, two, four, and five. So if I go in here to BS1, it's gonna give me the snake curve brush and it might pop up a warning saying, hey, Sculptures Pro mode should be on. Let's try that again, BS2, there we go. It's gonna say, this brush performs best when you use the Sculptures Pro, great. We'll skip this note until next start and we'll go up here and we'll just turn that on. We'll do BS4 and BS5. Now the reason I did all those is because down here in the brush now, these are my recently used brushes, so I can just very quickly go through one, two, four, and five right through here. So we'll start with brush number one, and I'm gonna make my brush size a little bit smaller. I'm gonna hold down S and then just move my cursor to the left a little bit. And we're gonna keep our eye on all of these uh, stroke settings here. In fact, let's open up curve functions. I'm sorry, not curve functions, curve modifiers, because we're gonna be paying a lot of attention to stuff going on in this menu. So we have a sphere, we have snake curve one selected. We're gonna drag out a curve and we're just gonna pull on that curve. And you're gonna see, it's just gonna kinda of come straight at me for a while and it's gonna start wiggling. And it's also gonna lean pretty far forward. And that's all being controlled by these settings. So one more time, I'm gonna pull on here and you see it's gonna kinda of sweep forward and then it starts wrinkling up a little bit. So what's causing all of that? So first of all, underneath stroke, you're gonna see we have intensity turned on. And if we click on this curve fall off, just like when you were using this on the, on the new brush extrude profile curves and the new 
brush curve alphas, we can use this to determine what direction this snake hook wants to go. So for example, if I go ahead and tap on my object to get rid of that curve, I'm gonna draw this out again, but pay attention to where my start and where my end is on that curve. So I started here and I ended here. And what that means is the intensity is very high when I started and very low on the end. So start, it's gonna be very intense. End is gonna be very low intensity according to this curve, because here's the start on this side and on the right side is the end. So now when I pull on this, you're gonna see it's gonna be very intense on that start dot and very low intensity on the other uh, dot. Now if I tap off to get rid of that curve, and then I go up here and I drag the opposite direction, so start and end, it's gonna be very high intensity start on this side, and then it's going to end on that side to be very low intensity. So that's how you control that direction. Now if I undo both of those, and I turn intensity off, and then I drag this out, you're gonna see it's just gonna pull in a straight line. There is no intensity to pull it one direction or the other, but you can use that to your advantage. In fact, if we go from snake cook, or sorry, snake curve one, and we choose snake curve two, you're gonna see the intensity is turned on and it gives us this shape. So now when we pull out, it's going to be very weighted towards the middle. So as we pull out, it's gonna to wanna to really push this in a rounded form. So again, if you want it to be flat, just turn intensity off, you'll get a nice flat result. If you want it to be controlled by the curve, make sure intensity is turned on and change the curve to whatever you'd like. Again, we can go back to snake hook one. We've got the curve here, so we can modify this. Just pull it straight out. We can go ahead and flip horizontally. Oops, sorry, turn intensity back on. So we're gonna pull this direction once, and then if I go through here and then hit flip horizontal, it'll pull in the other direction. So let's go ahead and redraw that curve here. And now it's gonna to wanna to pull back in the other direction. So it pulled this way and then it pulled this way. And of course, everything in between. So use the curve editing skills you've developed in the last couple of videos, or I should say back when we were doing the brush extrusion videos. So again, we can lift this side up. So it'll go intense to not intense. We can make this dip down. So it goes intense to very low intensity to very high intensity to very low intensity. And now when we drag this curve out, you'll see that behavior mimicked in how this curve is uh, behaving. Now there was another difference between snake curve one here. Let's go ahead and reset that stroke and flip it horizontally. So here's snake curve one and then snake curve two. Look down here where it says projection, position projection and direction projection. On snake curve one, direction projection is set to 0.45 and on snake curve two, it's set to zero. So the higher you go with this direction projection, the more it's gonna take your surface normal into account. So this one, it's fairly low, it's at like 0.45. This thing can go all the way up to two. So 0.5 is like half of one, obviously. So I can go through here. It's like a quarter of the way, let's say. So I'm gonna pull this through. And then as I start getting towards the end, it starts wiggling. It starts kind of wiggling around and creating like this little seaweed effect, which is totally cool. You know, that leads to a lot of happy accidents. And you can see from when I was doing my demo here, when I was making the fish, you know, that came in handy when I was pulling out very, you know, wavy fins and stuff. So that can be very hard to recreate, even with like cloth brushes. Now, if you don't like that waviness, what you can do is you can go set that direction and position down to zero. And then when you pull out, it'd be a lot more predictable. It basically just goes in one direction and it doesn't start really start wavering. I mean, you can kind of get it to waver if you start like going crazy with your, with your mouse you know, as you're kind of pulling, um, but it's much more difficult to do. If you pull this up to direction and projection of two, you're gonna see it's kind of gonna go haywire. It's gonna grab all the little uh, surface normals of that mesh and just starts flowing them all the way through. Now, speaking of when we were talking about the camera direction, you're gonna see for all of these brushes, the brush modifier is a set at 0.5. That means I'm controlling half of the direction of where that curve's going and the surface normal is controlling half. So, and that's true for every single one of these you're gonna see it set at 0.5. Now an interesting one, the strength multiplier is set at 0.4 for snake curve five. We'll get back to that uh, in a bit. But I just wanted you guys to know that the brush modifier is set to 0.5 for all of these. Now one brush that has that built in, that direction projection, is the uh, snake curve four. So you click on that one, you're gonna see it's set to one. And now when we pull this out, again, it's just gonna kind of treat it as that kind of seaweed kind of look here. Very neat, very cool. Now, you can also, let's go ahead and turn on X symmetry here. 
remember you can pull this out away from the object and get some very cool effects, but you can also pull it in to the object and you can keep manipulating this curve and you kind of pull this thing around and you'll get some really, really neat happy accents. And always feel free to redraw the curve too. You can go through here and kind of redraw this curve here and kind of start pulling through and then tap off and then maybe go back here and start drawing and then tap off and maybe go back through here and start pulling some curves in and you'll get some really, really cool uh, ideas going for maybe some creature work you might want to do. So now let's go ahead and undo those. We've talked about how this curve can control uh, the look of your mesh. So you got that intensity there and that's going to control this. And then of course you can mess around with this curve and get some really neat effects too. You can get kind of a split that intensity there. You can also turn that intensity completely off. And in fact, we'll go ahead and reset it so we're not distracted by that. We can also go in here to an alpha and let's choose this alpha 09 and we can pull that through our mesh and you're going to see that's also going to affect our curve and or you can use both of them. You can turn on intensity and alpha and it'll, of course it'll pull more in one direction. If you need it to stick to your curve a little bit more, that's where this strength multiplier can come into play. It'll kind of push your mesh out a little bit faster and you'll get a little more performance out of uh, a little bit more difficult meshes. Speaking of, you know, alphas and strength multipliers, let's go ahead and switch this to alpha 32. And now you're gonna see we're getting a very cool effect with this one. And all we've done is add a little bit of alpha noise to control the overall effect. And we've used intensity to kind of make it pull a little harder on the end dot instead of the start dot here. Again, you can also turn that off and it'll be a little bit more uniform throughout. And then we also have direction projection set at two, so it's just going crazy. It's doing that seaweed thing, right? Of course, you can change that. You can drop that down to zero, and now it's gonna be a lot, a lot more uniform. It'll still kind of pick up those surface normals eventually, but again, it's gonna give you um, a little more of a uniform take as opposed to, you know, set the two. You can see the difference there. It immediately starts going haywire. Both cool effects though. Now you can also mess with the position projection. I wanna say, let's see here, you know what? Just in case, let's go down here to brush, reset all brushes, and we'll take a look at that setting here. So again, we'll do BS1, BS2, BS4, and BS5, just to get them in our recently used. And we're gonna look at that proje position projection, and I think they're all set to one. So if we set the, you know, let's go ahead and grab uh, snake one. If we grab the direction projection, set that to zero. Position projection set to one. It pulls out fairly uniformly. If we set that to zero, it'll literally just kind of follow the curve. And if we set that to two, I think that makes it go a little bit haywire as well. So we'll go ahead and leave that at one. But I did like that straight one. So if I go down here, Actually, we'll go ahead and keep snake curve one, but we'll turn off the intensity so we get a nice straight profile pulled out. So you can use this to your advantage too. Now it is a little bit thin. You can see it kind of tapers to a pretty thin uh, shape here. So let's go ahead and uh, hold down S and make our draw size a little bigger. That's gonna determine kind of the thickness that pulls out of here. And then if we go through here and redraw our curve and pull out, we can pull straight up. So I bet we can do some really cool stuff eventually with some nice mechanical uh, style creatures to kind of go through here and kind of pull some of these shapes and see what kind of cool stuff we can get away with. Um, using this method, I think we can do some really neat stuff. Now one brush that does have an alpha built in and the strength uh, modified. So we can go in here, we can see this is the curve fall off. So we already know that curve is going to kind of pull a little heavier in the middle. And we have this brush alpha in there. So it's really giving us kind of a interesting textured surface as we pull. Now, like I said before, underneath here, you're going to see strength multiplier set to four. If we put this down to one, you're going to see when we try to use this, it's really going to pull away pretty quickly. It kind of tapers off and it's a little difficult to use. That's where you can use a strength multiplier to your advantage. You can force that mesh out a little harder and now you'll get a lot more life out of this, uh, out of this curve. So if you need it, you can go down to that strength multiplier and just bump it up a notch. Now, if we go back to snake one and we turn intensity back on, you're gonna see we use intensity a lot and not size. 
That's because intensity is really going to be nice for directing the flow of what this curve does. However, if we turn on size, it's going to change the brush, the brush size. So essentially what that's going to do is kind of taper off the effect altogether. Instead of making it less intense to more intense, it's going brush size big to brush size small. And that's the result you're going to get. And in fact, if your brush size is a little too small, you'll see it falls off pretty rapidly. Now, if that's a cool effect and you, that's useful to you, just remember it's there. But for the most part, intensity is the one that's going to give you the most consistent uh, curvature read. Now, remember, you can also you know, start pulling out in one direction. You can go through here. You can redraw your curve. It's Sculptures Pro. And you can even go in here and, like again, flip horizontal. And you can start pulling it in that same direction, flip horizontal, and pull in the opposite direction here. There we go. So you can get, uh, again, very, very cool effects. Now, like I mentioned before, we can use alphas with this. You simply go in here. That's going to also dictate along with intensity if you want. And speaking of alphas, underneath stroke modifiers, we do have roll turned on for these. That's going to stretch the alpha once. So one long arrow is going to be projected through here. And because we have the intensity at the start higher than at the beginning, or high at the beginning than at the end, as we pull this out, you're going to see an arrow start to form, and it's going to be more intense on one side than the other. Again, we can raise our brush size a little bit, and as we pull this out, that's the result. Now, if you want a higher resolution Sculptures Pro mesh, you're going to see if we turn on Polyframe, you know, it's tessellating at that resolution, which is generally fine. fine. However, if we go over here to Brush, you're going to see we have a Sculptures Pro setting here. So it's subdivide size is set at two by default. Let's set it down to one. And now when you see us pull this out, it's going to be a much denser mesh. So the lower this number is, we set it down to 0.5. Be a little careful with this. You don't want to make it too expensive. You're going to see we get a much higher resolution mesh. Uh, but you also have to go a lot slower in order to get that curve to kind of stick and get that mesh to kind of follow it out. But you're going to see we are getting a much, much higher resolution mesh there. But I'll go ahead and set this back to two. Now, like we mentioned before, when we uh, hold down control and then go into the mesh splat, you can throw a little splat on here. And in fact, let's undo that. Let's raise that intensity a little bit, give us a little bit more meat to kind of chew on here. And then now we can use these brushes in conjunction with uh, mesh splats. We'll go ahead and turn this down, go ahead and drag a curve across here. We'll go ahead and start pulling this out. And again, you get some very, very neat effects. You can kind of grow little alien plant life uh, out of these splatters or you can turn this into like a creature uh, creature head or something like that and again if you want more of that wiggle on there the more of that seaweed jiggle you can go in here to your stroke crank up that direction projection just a little bit you can go through here and you can redraw curves however you want you can pull right off of this one if you want to add a little flavor we've actually got an alpha in there but you know you know go into these you know dot alphas in here and that'll give you a little more texture and you can see very quickly you can get some really neat stuff so go nuts with the mesh splat brush in here go and grab a curve so much cool stuff I already see a little uh, creature face kind of emerging from what we're doing here. And in fact, always remember, uh, you can go ahead and Dynamesh this result. So under Geometry, Dynamesh, you wanna make this all one mesh here. Just go ahead and turn this into a Dynamesh here. Maybe raise that resolution just a bit so you don't lose some of that detail. And now you're free to go through here and again, just start experimenting and kind of playing around with some of these brushes, see what kind of cool effects you might get. Oh, and speaking of cool effects, remember, just like when we were using the splat brush and we went down here and we said, turn on gradient, let's go to dark red to kind of a blight, uh, bright orange, and we could use our mesh splat with poly mesh turned on. Let's go ahead and say, I guess that's fine. So you can go through here and you can kind of splat with color. You can do the exact same thing with your curve brushes. So let's go back to our... Let's grab snake curve four here and we'll go ahead and drag our curve out and as we pull let's go ahead and unmask as we pull it's going to go again it's going to have a uh, bright orange to a red tip but you can also change this on the fly so let's turn off gradient let's start 
with dark red and we'll start pulling and then we'll change this to a brighter orange and keep pulling subtle here so we'll start dark red and then a little bit brighter red a little more orange as we pull real quick so again as we're pulling it's updating the color here let's go to a little bit brighter yellow here a little bit brighter yellow so again, as we're updating the mesh, we're updating the color on the fly. And uh, again, just remember you can use vertex color with these as well.